This is T West. Welcome to Afro Synergy News and Information on Africa and the African Diaspora. Avaz, Obama, and the Makings of War Through Demonstrations and Humanitarianism. U.S. Secretary of State Hillary Clinton is said to be pressuring Russia to try to push forward a United Nations resolution for the third time against Syria. This is especially true after the United Nations and the Red Crescent has had some access to the areas of Syria where terrorists have terrorized the city of Homs for the last 12 months. Today, Vladimir Putin once again is president of Russia and I'm sure he remembers the deadly threats of U.S. Senator John McCain a few months ago, telling him what was done to Gaddafi could happen to Putin. Now, Hillary Clinton should not look forward to Russia budging at all in a direction that would harm Syria. Putin recently won the presidency of Russia by a huge landslide with several candidates running against him. He has a mandate for a strong Russia that stands with and for its ally states around the world and not neglect them as it did with Libya under the presidency of Medvedev. The primary focus of this program would be on Avaz, a U.S. non-governmental organization that has its tentacles in Syria as well as it did in Libya. On the blog, The Wrong Kind of Green, it was written, The role Avaz played in the NATO-led annihilation of Libya, which prior to the strategically planned and unprovoked invasion by imperialist states, held the highest standard of living in Africa. The slaughter has left as many as 150,000 Libyans dead. NGOs must be held accountable for paving the way for these crimes against humanity. Again, that is from the blog, The Wrong Kind of Green. Avaz claims to have an international online community of 3.3 million members and that it operates in 12 different languages. It says it is dedicated to building a global response to problem without borders, such as climate change. Okay. It is one of the do-gooder organizations that is well-connected, entrenched, and it appears well-financed. I am going to share the most recent communications I received from Avaz, and as I do that, I am also going to show you how the humanitarian game is being played by the United States government and its allies to make war against those governments that have not fully accepted their global banking monetary system. Okay, the letter. This morning, four Western journalists are home safe with their families. The echoes of the horror and the heroism of Baba Amir still ringing in their ears. Over 50 Syrian activists supported by Avaz volunteered to rescue them and scores of wounded civilians from the Syrian army's kill zone. Many of those incredible activists have not survived the week. There is no such thing as the Syrian army's kill zone. Avaz's objective is to present a narrative of poor helpless Syrians fighting against a well-armed monster whose objective it is to blow up the buildings, blow up the energy pipelines and the power stations. Even on the surface, this is an insane proposition because there is no motive for the Syrian government to do such things. As I go through this, Avaz's letter emailed to me and probably millions of others, keep in mind that the Obama administration is very close to the Avaz players, and so too are the Clintons. The letter. Abu Hanin is one of the heroes. He's 26 years old, a poet, and when his community needed him, 
he took the lead in organizing the citizens, journalists that Avaz has supported to help the voices of Syrians reach the world. The last contact with Abu Hanin was on Thursday as regime troops closed in on his location. He read his last will and testament to the Avaz team in Beirut and told us where he had buried the bodies of the two Western journalists killed in the shelling. Since then, his neighborhood of Baba Amir has been a black hole, and we still don't know his fate. Here you see Avaz ignoring the facts, ignoring the truth and reality, and immediately going to what they know psychologically will cloud your reasoning. I speak of appealing to your emotions. They tell you this guy is relatively young, the age of 26, and he's a poet. Most people do not think of stone killers when they see or hear of a poet. They then make him into a hero. He steps up when the community needed him to take on a role of a superhero character. Abu is painted as one who will be the voices of Syrians. Avaz says, desire to be heard by all in the world. Then comes death the ultimate emotion grabber, with the grand villain, the monster, the regime troops. Ah, the anticipation as this monster, this boogeyman, find you. Not Al-Qaeda, but the security forces of Syria closed in on Abu's location. It's Abu against this terrible monster with a thousand heads. Just when you thought you had no more tears, suddenly, then Abu's last will and testament is read, generating greater suspense in the anticipated death of our hero. Oh no, dead bodies in the last will and testament. Our presumed hero has taken on superhuman characteristics of moving from a poet to the undertaker, revealing where he buried the bodies of two journalists. Yes, your own Western journalists. Surely this regime, this monster, must have killed these innocent journalists. Suddenly the storyline goes silent. The monster has arrived in Baba Amar. What if that monster is really the savior of Baba Amar? What if Abu Hanin is just an actor in a well-rehearsed, deadly play scripted by the intelligence think tanks of the United States, of Britain? What if the audience in this movie theater discover that Abu Hanin is acting out his role just as Danny Abdul Dayum is an actor? The letter. It's easy to despair when seeing Syria today, but to honor the dead, we must carry forward the hope they died with. As Abu Amr went dark and fears of massacre spread, Syrians took to the streets yet again across the country in a peaceful protest that showed staggering bravery. So goes the storyline of Avaz. The writers of this letter are skilled in appealing to your emotions, and they know that emotions often trumps good common sense. Therefore, they will use words such as black hole, massacre, and dark. Playing on the fears instilled in you since you was a child. Yes, it is all about psychological manipulation of your thinking. I am here to bring you knowledge and awaken you from such manipulation. Where are all of these so-called peaceful protesters? In the city of Homs, some of these people are on record asking where is the government of Syria and saying such things as if the government troops had been here, these gangs, these terrorists would not have been shooting the people. They would not have been blowing up the power plants, blowing up the oil pipelines. The regime 
but more appropriately the government troops are now in homes and the terrorists are either on the run jailed or dead yes dead the word regime has a Hollywood monstrous connotation to it but no surprise there since it appears much of this was lifted from such Hollywood scripts the letter their bravery is our lesson the gift of the Syrian people to the rest of us because in their spirit in their courage to face the worst darkness our world has to offer a new world is being born a new world is being born oops there it is a new world is being born like the new order we see in Iraq how about the chaos we now see in Libya with continuing bloodletting and most recently a Benghazi meeting concluding that there is a plan to divide Libya into separate parts what kind of spirit is this so-called new world I can accept this deceit and storyline in a movie in Hollywood but not in the reality we call life I would not call the shedding of innocent blood in Syria a gift a gift a gift it is a curse upon the American people Avaz says worst darkness in making it inclusive of the entire world again we see the reaffirmation of playing upon your emotions instead of your critical thought necessary to effectively evaluate and judge what a vase is throwing at you the letter and in the new world the Syrian people are not alone millions of us from every nation have stood with them time and time again right from the beginning of their struggle nearly 75,000 of us have donated almost three million dollars to fund people powered movements and deliver high-tech communications equipment to help them tell their story and enable the Avaz team to help smuggle in over two million dollars worth of medical supplies smuggle 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 keyword generally you can fool the young but not even all of them can you fool we who have been around for a while and have witnessed this trichology deployed by the United States and other governments all too well know about the lies and deceit when it is presented Avaz once again says new world no is nothing new but it